we surrender to you.
us to step into what it is that he's created you to do. back to 
to where they were, God. Yes, that God, that this would be a time of true breakthrough, Lord God. Yes. A time of a chapter closing and a new one opening, Lord God. A time of stepping into the water, God. A time, Lord God, of stepping in and walking on dry land, Lord God. God, I pray for every single woman in this house, Lord God. God, that there would be true surrender, God, of heart, mind, Lord God. That you would reposition yourself on the throne of our hearts tonight, Lord God. Forgive us, God, for our idols, Lord God. Forgive us for our excuses, Lord God. Forgive us, God, for, for our neglect, for running away from the call tonight, Lord God. We repent right now, Lord. And we ask that Holy Spirit, that you would show us the way to go, God. That you would give us the strength, Lord God, to just obey, Lord God. That we would lay down our excuses, Lord God. That we would stop running away from the call and start running towards it, God. Fearless, Lord God. Knowing that the same power, Lord God, that rose you from the dead, Lord God, lives in us, God. God, we thank you, King, for your sweet presence tonight. Holy Spirit, take it away, God. That this night, Lord, would just be a time where you are magnified. That God, even with the call, we wouldn't make the call about us, Lord. That we wouldn't make it about glorifying us, Lord God. But that we would live, Lord God, to bring your name fame. We surrender to you, King. We surrender to you tonight, King. Just confess that tonight. I surrender to you, King. I surrender to you, King. Surrender to you, King. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Go ahead and find your seats. church 
And every Sunday for like three straight months, hey, I'm going to come pick you up. You know, I come up with like some, something crazy, some reason why I couldn't go, but she was relentless in inviting me. And I came to the service. The next week I went to her wedding, and the week after I got saved. And literally ever since then, my life has been forever changed. So I am in debt to this person for just their faithfulness and obedience and, and not giving up on me. And so tonight, I want to call up Pastor Maria, if we can have just a, just an awesome, schedule yesterday I started to panic and I thought oh my gosh wait you've given me like a 15 minute block here what the heck <laughs> and so I began to pray and, and even as I sat in my seat I began to pray and the Lord spoke to me and gave me a scripture it was when sister Cynthia started to speak yesterday during the worship Amen. and I have wrestled because I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and this scripture just kept running through my heart through my mind and I wrestled with God at finally at 4 o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, fine. I'll get up. You win. <laughs> and I got up, and I just had to let the Lord flow. So before I say anything else, let's just pray real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that your spirit is here. Yes. God, and we honor you in yes. this place, Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. And so right now, as I stand before your daughters, I receive the anointing to speak on your behalf, yes. God. Yes. And I pray that I would represent your love, yes. your compassion, and your sovereignty, yes. Lord. Yes. And so I thank you. Give us ears to hear what your spirit has to say. Yes. In yes. Jesus' name, yes. amen. Yes. amen. Yes. All right. And so tonight, this was confirmed because we heard the word reawaken. And so I knew at that moment, oh gosh, you got me. And then Sophia doesn't know this, but that song, I Give Myself Away, is like the song that the Lord used so many years ago at the altar because he asked me, do you really believe that? Are you, do you really mean when you say I give myself away? And I thought, well, yeah, kind of, sort of. But let's, I give myself away as long as you do things my way. Mm -hmm. And when I remember when we went out to San Francisco, I would listen to that song over and over, and the Lord would tell me, you said, all my hopes, all my dreams, right? And I thought, wow, okay, God. And it's just been a ride, uh, an enjoy, a very enjoyable ride since then, even during the hard times. At any rate, so the scripture that the Lord gave me is in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. And it says, a little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Mm -hmm. So, awaken. Awaken. Our sister spoke last night that there are some of you here that are asleep and you need to awaken. Hallelujah. Amen. So, for the sake of time, just to summarize the scripture, what is it saying? Mm -hmm. It says, a lazy man, don't eat Right? A lazy man is not going to eat. Right. Because in the physical, we need to work yes. in order to have money, in order to be able to go to the grocery store, in order to put food on the table. A lazy man, you don't, you don't work, you're going to have the money, you're not going to eat, you're going to starve. Well, the same is in our spiritual, in our spiritual life, that we need to work. We need to do those things that God wants us to do. We need to work. Because if we don't work, we are going to fall by the wayside, right? So my mother used to say to me, el que no recibe consejo no llegará viejo. <laughs> so what does that mean? Well, translated verbatim in Spanish is so good because it rhymes. But in English, <laughs> that if you don't take advice, you're not going to grow old. And why is that? And I, and I, I wouldn't, I couldn't understand. I would say to my mother, what do you mean by that? And I remember one day she told me, she said to me, people that are doing well 
don't need advice. They need encouragement to keep going. People that are not doing well need advice. And if you don't heed to advice, you will lose your footing. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Hear what the Lord is saying. So in the physical, we fill out an application. And we pray and we hope that we get an interview so that we can pour out our best. And the day of interview comes and what do we do? We, we put on our best, right? And we make sure that our eyeliner is right and our lipstick is right and my hair looks good. It looks corporate in a bun. And we get there and we get there on time. Right? And then, whoa, when we get the call, you got the job. Woo woo! Yeah, because you did everything right. Here it comes, people. And so, why is it that we don't take that same approach with the Lord? Right? We don't take that approach with the Lord. In fact, in the spiritual, the custom is, eh, if I don't feel like going to Bible study, you know what? It's raining outside. I ain't going to Bible study. Right. Who's going to be there? Come Who's on. teaching it? Come oh, on. I don't want to go. You know what? I'll go next week. Come on. Come on. Right? And that's what we do. And even then, and you know what? And if I, uh, if I wake up on time, I'll get to service on Sunday. Right? And sometimes you might even show up very late. Well, I, I want to know if you showed up late to the interview, what would that look like? Ooh. But don't we have an, an, an interview with our God every Sunday? Amen. We should be on time, right? Yeah. We all came early to have our dinner tonight. We need to follow through on Sundays. Yeah. A little more sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Yes. I don't want to fall by the wayside. Take I don't down. want to fall off the cliff, right? Because where's my Cobra Kai women in here? Any Ooh. Cobra Kai ladies in here? <laughs> All right. So in Cobra Kai, there's a scene where uh, Crease, the bad guy, yeah. right? He was in the military. Yeah. And so you would sh they would show the men that they, they had been taken captives during the war. And so... Uh, their captors would entertain themselves by getting two out of the, of the out of the prisoners' cage, and they would have them fight. Well, one would die because they would fall off the edge, right? And so, but what was down there? It was snakes. Snakes would eat them up. We had to. We got to consider our walk the same way. We're walking on a ledge. It's a narrow road. I don't want to fall off that narrow road, lose my balance because, oh, I put my eyes on something else and there's a snake pit waiting for me. Right? A little more sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So I kept hearing our sister yesterday during the worship say, awaken, awaken. Some of you are asleep. We need to wake up. We don't have time. We don't have time. I, I started this when we were doing the panel interview. There was a question, and I remember back in the day when we first got saved, we we would go to where there was Sunday service, and it was in the afternoon. Who the heck wants to go to church at four or five in the afternoon? That is nuts. We want to go early in the morning and get it out of the way. But service was in the afternoon, and then there was Tuesday Bible study. Pastor Wendy was leading it. And then Thursday we had midweek service, and no, yeah, Thursday we had midweek service, and then Friday night, it was at pastor's house, he was teaching Bible study. And then Saturdays there was always something going on. That was our life. This is what we did. There was nothing else. This is all my husband and I knew for years. And as we started to grow, pastor started to release certain couples to, to become Bible study leaders. But you know what? I remember my husband and I were like, bummed out. What do you mean Bible study at our house on Friday night? Are you kidding me? And we're going to miss your Bible study? And I remember my husband used to call Pastor Ralph and ask him, so what, do you, what did you teach? Send me that, send me that, that, that teaching. And you know why he would do that? Not because he didn't know what he was going to teach, because we wanted to stay plugged in. Amen, amen. We wanted to be on the same page with them. Amen, we amen. wanted to know what is God speaking to them, because that's what we wanted. I mean, we used to have such a good old time, all the holidays we'd spend together. 
but how we have fallen so far away from that. And I get it that this year COVID has been crazy. COVID has been nuts. And I, I know that you all feel the same way that I do, that we can't wait till it's over. But we kept busy about the things of God. And nowadays, it seems like some folks are content with just going to church on Sunday. If we know people like that, we gotta encourage them. That's not enough. That's not enough, right? One of the things my husband and I did before we came to the Lord is we would get up every morning and we would go work out together. He was my personal trainer and every morning we would work out six days a week because it was important to our health. So when we came to the Lord, we understood we need God. We need to be around God's people because it's just as, as important as working out, Amen. right? It all Amen. falls in line. It all goes together. So I feel that with the things that I see, it saddens my heart because even in this room, how many of you read word today? How many of you disciplined yourself to read the word of God every day? How many? Other than being here, how many have taken the time to go away and go be with the Father? Amen. We can't just do it because our sisters are watching. Oh, look at me, look at me. Oh, I lift my hands up high. Oh, I dance. We need, this needs to be a discipline, a discipline. And this is the only way that we endure. This is the only way. You want to know what the calling of God upon your life is? Then discipline yourself to go after him. Because we need him. Yes. We need him. Amen? So we need to have spiritual muscles. Right? Just like working out. It's something that I still keep up is my disciplines. And I wonder how many of you are disciplined? How many of you take the time? It's so easy, 20 minutes a day. What? Is yeah. that asking too much to read no. your word 20 minutes a day? No. That's crazy. Or to pray for 20 minutes. Amen. That's Amen. nuts. We're not gonna survive that way. We've got to read and pray every day. We've got to, Pastor, yeah. when you talked about Amen. yesterday, we've got Bible study. We've got the equipping the saints. Amen. We've got Amen. Bible connects. Amen. You know what? Every one of you in this room, every one of you should be faithful every week attending a Bible connect. And how many of you are really doing it? You make excuses. We cannot make excuses. Right. If we begin to look at the word and we begin to look at the times that we're in, he's coming back. Yeah. I, you know, 50 years ago, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. But now he's really coming back. We see it in the times, right? We can't be ignorant. And maybe, you know what, maybe he won't, maybe I'll die before he comes back. But if I give in, then maybe my kids or my grandkids won't know him. We gotta, we got to do this. We have got to awaken. It's time. No more excuses, women. No more excuses. I know, I'm different. I'm a little different. I, I, know, I, didn't, I didn't inherit that soft spirit of Pastor Wendy's. God gave me a big mouth. Tell like it is. But... So Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. God is a gardener, right? Everything is about reaping and sowing. So what are the seeds? I'll tell you tonight that there are three kinds of seeds. And what is a seed? A seed is a conversation with God about your future. That's what a seed is. The words we speak the decisions we make, and the offerings we give. And I'm not talking about the financial offering, but let everything that you do flow out of an action of love from your heart. Amen. Because if there is no love in your heart, and I'm going to say this right now, is that if you wonder what the call upon your life is, then you've got to examine your heart first. It starts there. If you are in this place, and you know that you are offended with someone in the church, 
especially a leader, then let me tell you, you don't read the Word of God. Amen. Don't tell me you do because you don't. Because the Word of God in 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that He inspired the Word for what? For reproof, yes. for correction, for training in righteousness. Amen. So see, God laid it out that we are going to be corrected. Yes. But if you get offended and all of a sudden I can't go to church, you know what she told me. <laughs> <laughs> then, you, then we're not reading the word of God because we should receive the correction. We should say, no, it's good to be corrected. Because see, if you see something in me that I don't see, right? Especially a kid, look, when we've been to the altar, when we first come in, everyone's eyeliner and mascara is all nice, right? But then when you've been to the altar, it's all smudged and smeared. Don't you want somebody to tell you you're a little smudged there? Amen. Right? If you want to walk around that way all day long. No, tell me. Right? I want to be told, right? Or yes. you got a little boogie yes. thing now. Yes. Yes. I want to be told. Yes. I don't want to walk around looking all crazy. I want to be told. The same thing. If someone yes. sees something yes. in us that is not lining up with what the Word of God says, yes. receive the correction. Yes. But if you can't receive yes. correction, read your Bible. Why, you know what? I don't get offended with people. I just don't get offended because when people go all crazy, I got 20 seconds. When people go all crazy, <laughs> <laughs> it just tells me they're not praying and reading. Amen. 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 End of story. Amen. Period. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be faithful to my time. I just want to remind you this because Pastor Benny said, "Come in as a Mark. That's okay. Leave us a Mary. <laughs> yes. and strive to be a Queen Esther." Yes. Let me tell you something about Queen Esther. You look at Esther chapter two, verse twelve. It tells us that she endured twelve months hey. of beauty training. Twelve months. Yeah. And and in those times the eunuch was there chopping her up. And she was beautiful, but chopping her up, correcting everything about her. She didn't just all of a sudden become a queen because she prayed. There was preparation involved. Yeah. She yeah. had to go through yeah. some stringent training yeah. 24-7 for a whole year. Yeah. 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 So what I'm gonna bring to you tonight is make the decision. It's gonna change your life. You have nothing to lose but a whole lifetime of peace, of joy to gain by just dedicating 2020 vision. Let's Amen. start there. We've gotten away from the 2020 vision. Read 20 minutes a day, pray 20 minutes a day, and build from that. Because if we don't do the basic, Amen. we're going to fall off yeah. that ledge. We won't be able to stay on the, on the narrow. We're going to fall into that wide road. Hallelujah. The devil's lurking around. Yeah. He wants every one of us. Yes. Okay, Amen. so. Am I done? I'm done. I went over. <laughs> Bad. 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 There's no more sleep, no more slumber. Okay. All right? Amen. So, and it is my great pleasure to introduce to you my spiritual mother. I watched her, I observed her, and I would think, I can't be quiet like that. I've got a big mouth. And I always waited for her to tell me, shh. And she did it. She's been so good to me. Pastor Ralph, on the other hand, would say, sis, please. <laughs> <laughs>
powerful word that Maria um, brought forth, even though it was didn't even seem like 15 minutes. Was that was it? Was supposed to, it didn't feel like it. I was like, oh, but you just got up there and two minutes already. Dang. But she brought such an awesome word, and yes, just as the, the this this the theme of this conference is such a time as this. God has brought you here for such a time as this to, and he even brought, um, saying what I said yesterday was that um, he's here to awaken you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm here to fan the flame. Every speaker that is here is appointed for a purpose and a reason, and it's to refan that flame that has burnt out, that has quieted down, that has just kindled. You know, we're here to refan that flame. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So before I get started, because I'm already stumbling on my words, I need Jesus to uh, help me get through this and the Holy Spirit to use me and not be tongue-tied. So I'm going to pray real quick before um, we get started. Can I have the mic lowered just a little bit? I feel like I have an echo, and I don't like hearing my voice. <laughs> anyway, sorry, you guys. But let me pray. So Father, I just want to come before you one more time tonight, Lord God, and I ask that, Father God, that you continue to have your way, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, I pray that each and every lady tonight sees that, Lord, we are not our own, Lord God, yes, Lord. and that you have called us out for something greater, Lord God. Yes, and I pray that, Lord, that you continue yes, to speak yes, to your daughters, Lord God. Yes. Continue to, to show them things, Lord God, that of, of things yes. that they need to put away, Lord God, that the things that they need to stop doing, Lord God, or things that they need to stop following that are not of you, Father. Yes. And so, Lord, I just pray that, that Lord, that you um, just continue to speak to them tonight, Lord God. I pray for myself right now, Lord God. Lord, I, I am admitting that I can't do this without you, Lord God. I need the Holy Spirit to fill me tonight so that I can give them you, Lord. Not, I don't want to give them me. I don't want to give them my words, Lord God, but I want to give them you, Lord. Because your word will come forth with power, Lord God. It will come forth with change, Lord. And so, Father, I set myself aside so that you can fill me with your spirit, Lord. God. And so, Lord, I thank you, and I hand this time over to you, and I ask that you continue to have your way tonight, Lord God. Do what you need to do, and speak what you need to speak, Father. And so I thank you, and I give you the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So last night, um, I talked about how we need to come out of the old and go into something, into the new, right? And so tonight, I'm going to talk about recognizing the authority that you have. Um, and you might think, like, what, what does that mean? Well, tonight I'm going to start talking about the words that we speak, the words that come forth. Because sometimes our words have the authority to shift things around. Um, so um, we're going to learn about that. So we're going to turn to Esther 5. 1 through 8, and I do apologize because tonight we're going to read a whole lot of Esther, so bear with me. So um, again, Esther 5, 1 through 8, it says, On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner courtyard of the king's palace, facing the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall, facing the doorway. When the king saw Esther... Uh, saw Esther, Queen Esther standing in the courtyard, he was pleased. He held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Queen Esther went forward and touched the end of it. The king asked, what is it, Queen Esther? What do you want, uh, what do you want to ask me? I will give you as much as half of my kingdom. Esther answered, my king, if it pleases you, come today with Haman to a banquet that I have prepared for you. Then the king said, Bring Haman quickly, so we may do what Esther asked. So the king and Haman went to the banquet Esther had prepared for them. As they were drinking wine, the king said to Esther, Now, what are you asking for? I will give it to you. What is it you want? I will give you as much as half of my kingdom. Esther answered, This is what I want and what I ask for. My king if you are pleased with me, and if it pleases you, give me what I ask for and do what I want. Come with him and tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for you. Then I will answer your question about what I want. 
So you may think like, what the heck did she even ask him to the, 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 to the banquet for if she wasn't even gonna say anything? But when the king, so going back to the beginning, the king held out his, scep his scepter to give Esther the authority to come and stay in his presence. Because again, remember how I said yesterday, if the king didn't hold out his scepter, you were gonna pretty much die. So if he held out his scepter, you can stay, you can ask, and you know, you're welcome to be in that place. So again, he held out his scepter, and so Esther was able to stay in his presence and to ask him anything, and he would listen and grant it, right? So when we fast and we pray, that's when the king, our king, will hold out his scepter for us so that we can come into his presence. Where we, you know, she was talking about praying in, 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 in um, you know, uh, getting a hold of God. And this is, when we position ourselves, let me say this, when we position ourselves in God's presence, that's when he'll, he's listening. Because we can do all these crazy things. We can sit here and do all this and be like, Lord, hear me, Lord, hear me. But he's not really listening because you're too busy. There's, there, there's too much going on. We're not focused on what we, we want to do with God or what we want to ask God or be in his presence. Amen? Amen. Amen? And so in John, because again, when we fast and pray, that is when our king holds out his scepters and we can go in to be within his presence. And we can talk with him and ask him anything. John 14, 13 and 14 says this, you can ask anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me anything in my name, and I will do it. So right there, the, son, the God's already saying, come and ask me. Come and ask me what you want. Like I said last night, you don't know what your calling is, or you don't know what you're to do, go ask. That's all he's wanting to do. You know, uh, um, just like the blind, who was a blind Bartimaeus. You know, he was sitting at the gate, or he was sitting along the road, and he heard Jesus was coming, and he's all, hey, it's me, you know? And Jesus seen him, and he says, what can I do for you? That's all the Lord's asking us is, what can I do for you? Anything that we've had, any problems or anything that was going on, a situation that's going on in our lives, all he wants you to do is bring it to him, because he's asking, what can I do for you? What can I make it easier to help you get through? What can I help uh, uh, avenge you or what, you know, whatever the case is, he's asking, what can I do for you? So when Jesus says we can ask him anything, we can ask anything, right? But we must remember that our asking must be in his name that is according to God's character and will. God won't grant you requests contrary to his nature or his will. And we cannot use his name as some magic formula to fulfill our selfish desires. We can't ask, Lord, help me to win the lottery. Help me to win, you know, this, these things. Or help me, you know, help all this stuff that's not according to his will. Because that's just selfish. The Lord is, is wanting you to ask for kingdom things. He's asking you to, 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 to fulfill what he has for you. Whatever comes later down the line, then hey, praise the Lord, it comes. But he wants you to do what you need. He's asking for you to, to, to ask. Excuse me. He's ask, he wants you to ask for what his will is. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if you are sincerely following God and seeking his will, then, re, then our request will be in line with what he wants and he will grant it. Amen? Amen. So going back to Esther, when she had asked her people to come into prayer and fasting for her, before this, you know, before um, she went and met the king, right? So probably, Esther, um, excuse me, Esther probably was asking in what she needed to do and say in her situation, and what to help her, and how to help her choose when to say things, and when not to say them, and to choose the right words to speak to the king. Whenever we do something, even starting our day off, we have to go to the throne and, and, and say, Lord, take me over. Yes. Because when we decide to step out our door without even seeking God, then it's just us that's bringing us to people. And we're trying to make it godly when it's really not. 
Amen. So just as Esther, again, it doesn't say it in the Bible, but I assume this is what had happened. Because how are you going to fast and pray or ask for, you know, people to fast and pray with you and not ask these things, right? So Esther was sitting there and asking God, Lord, help me to, un to, help me to know what to do. Help me know what to say, how to say it, how to act, how to be, right? And, and, and so she, she was preparing herself to be able to sit before the king. Amen? Mm -hmm. Am I on? Am I okay? All right. And also, too, we have to realize that our words matter. The words we speak have an effect on everything. Amen. If we're not led by the Spirit, we're just shooting off Amen. random words. <laughs> words that can hurt, words that can, you know, uplift, words, you know, like, we're just shooting off, like, I guess to say blanks. You know, if you've ever shot a gun, you shoot blanks, so that's what your words are doing. Again, we can say words and not make it act like it's spiritual when it's really not. Amen? Amen. So before anything is done, words have to come forth to be put into motion. Right? Um, because we know that there is creative power in our words. We see in, in, in with God, you know, in the beginning, he created everything. Amen. Did he just say, it's done? Or did he speak the words to come forth? If we read in, 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 in Genesis, it tells us every day he did something. He spoke something. He spoke for the land to come. He spoke for the waters. He spoke for the sun. He spoke for the moon to come forth, and it did. So again, if we say we're Christians and we're like Christ, Christ is God, and if whatever words we speak, it's going to come into motion. It's going to start bringing things to come to pass, amen. amen. In the in the, um, I, I was blessed with the Esther anointing book, and I was reading kind of like reading it, but kind of skimming through it. And, and there was a, a quote in there. It says, "By words, worlds were framed, wars are fraught, and relationships are built or broken down by words. We must watch our words because there are angels and demons watching over every word." And waiting to perform the action we speak. Wow. Proverbs 18, 21. I don't have it on there. I added in after, but it says, life, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So whatever word we speak, it's either life or death. What words are you speaking in your situation what words are you speaking to the people you come in contact with? What words are you speaking to your family? Again, whatever you speak, it's either death or life. There's no in between, no halfway there. No, it's either life or death. So again, we need to choose what words we speak. Amen? And that, again, this is where we have to go into prayer. Because again, in it ourselves, we fail all the time. Amen. I'll be the first Amen. to say, I fail all the time if I'm not prayed up that like Amen. I need to be. Amen. My words will just start shooting off like arrows and just kind of bounce around in every direction. But when I'm prayed up and I seek God and I ask him, take me over today because I don't want to give anybody me. Come on. Amen. He'll give me the words that I need to speak. Amen. 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 So the Lord is waiting for you to position yourself in prayer so he can show you his plans and purpose for your life. Let me say this, things will not shift in your life, in your family or your workplace, in our cities, state and country, and the spiritual warfare that we are in will not be won until we get into a place and start to pray for it. That's right. Esther had to go before, go into prayer to know what she has to do to, 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 uh, to, get in, uh, to be able to speak to the king. She had to go into prayer to be like, okay, what is it that I need to do next? What do I need to do to be able to go to the king and tell him, you know, these things? How do I prepare myself? And that's the same with you. If you guys want to start seeing things changed, you need to start in prayer. Amen. You need to start praying for these things to start taking place. You, you know, I always used to say, Lord, 
Help me be the wife and the mother that I need to be. Close my mouth when I don't need to say things. And you know what happens? You pray that. Expect the Holy Spirit to come and slap you if he needs to. And speak to you if he, when he needs to. Because there was times in, in the beginning. Not anymore. I've learned. Um, but there in the, in, in the beginning, I used to just really just start just words just coming out. Just vomiting from my mouth. And. I'd always argue and fight and always want to put my two cents in with pastor. And, and, and again, this whole time I'm praying, Lord, help me to be that wife I need to be. Help me to, to, to say things that I need to say and help me to shut my mouth when I need to shut them. And I'm pretty sure that the Holy Spirit had been talking that whole time that I'm praying this, but yet still fighting and arguing and doing all these things. And I remember one day, Getting, being in an argument with my husband, and I literally heard the Holy Spirit say, shut up. You don't need to put your two cents in. And I was like, well, did I just get rebuked by the Holy Spirit? Like, what? You know, and, and, and from that day forward, I remember those words when I wanted to start arguing or when I wanted to start fighting or, or lash out in anger, whatever. You don't need to put your two cents in. Be quiet. You don't do. Do you really need to go there? Do you really need to say that? What is that gonna benefit you? Again, this is me. I don't know about you guys, but I know with me, that's how you guys might think. Oh, you're so quiet. You're so nice. But the Lord shows me. Do you really need to go there? Yeah. What benefit is that going to give the situation? Amen. Amen. So again, if you want things to change, start praying. Start seeking God. Start asking him to take over. And when he speaks to you, listen. Because you don't want to get revealed by the Holy Spirit in a loud, audible voice. Because it's scary. Because then you're just like, dang, like, I totally failed. Amen? Amen. So, again, um, start praying. Things will start shifting. You know, they may not come quickly, but all we have to do, all we can do is continue to pray. Continue to to believe and have faith that things are going to change. Because they will. God's not a liar. You, you can't say that I'll do these things, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do these things and then not do them. You know, he's not going to go back on his word. Again, if it isn't aligned with him. Yes. Amen? Amen? The Bible, I mean, sorry. In Matthew 18, 18, it says, I surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. So when we speak the word, we set things into motion. When we speak the word, the fiery darts, uh, to the fiery darts, we are saying that we have faith that the word is true and that we have authority over those fiery darts. Amen. When those fiery darts come, if you put on the, on, the, on the armor of God, what do you think those that armor does? Do you think it just allows those things to come at you? Do you think it, it, it allows those fiery darts to stick? Uh -huh. No. Like, if you've ever seen, you went to a, a museum and you see the armor, do you think arrows will stick? No, it's metal. It's going to bounce off. And that's the same thing. When you're prayed up, those fiery darts come, it's going to bounce off. You know, you might get one random arrow that kind of sticks, but you have to realize you have authority over there. You don't need to let that thing fester. You don't need to let that thing settle in. Be quick to pull it out. Be quick to say, hmm, no, that's not gonna, that's not me. That's not what's gonna happen. That's not the end of the story. Amen? Amen. But let me say this, just because we pray and speak the word that everything will be fine and you won't be bothered by it anymore, right? <laughs> I wish, right? I wish we get saved. We don't have to worry about anything. The devil is just like, oh, you're saved now. Get away, you know. <laughs> but sorry, it's not easy. It's not that easy. The devil won't, you know, again, won't be like, oh, you know the word. I'm going to stop messing with you. <laughs> no, he's going to keep sending his demons to come and distract you. Yes. And to see yes. what you guys will do with that situation yes. or with that distraction. Yes. Matthew, and I'm going to give you a perfect example. Matthew 4, 1 through 10. It says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him... He said, if you are the son of God, 
command these stones to become bread. But he answered him, Jesus, and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord God, and him only you shall serve. Amen. So if Jesus was giving you know, the little chihuahua in the ear of Satan, you know, during his time, what makes you think that you, you guys are no better? Amen. Or you guys are better. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like even Jesus, you know, Satan didn't stop, you know? And this was just something that was recorded. Just imagine all those times that from the, the lifespan of Jesus was here on earth, how much more that the devil was just barking and barking and barking. But what did he do? Did Jesus say, okay, Satan, you know what, you're right. You know, yes, I'm going to die, and, and no one's going to like me, and people are not going you know, to believe in me, and they think what I'm doing is just some hoax and some fake and some phony and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. What did he do? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. And he spoke the word. And then what did Satan do? I mean, after, in, in Matthew, what did he do? He fled. He fled. He fled. Amen. And that's what we need to do. You know, we need to take action like Jesus did. And again, Jesus didn't stop what he was doing because Satan, again, was in his ear. But Jesus kept doing the Father's will. And that's what we need to keep doing. Again, I, I'm not downgrading anybody's trial. I'm not downgrading anybody's tribulation. And I know it's hard. Just following Christ, yes, it is hard. But if you're prayed up and in your word and you know what the word says about you and you know who you are in Christ, those trials and those tribulations are a little bit easier. Yes. You can, yes. you can, you, you're able to get through them. They're not as bad. Amen. You know, and, and, and believe me when I say that because there's times where I was in a trial and tribulation <laughs> and I'm, you know, and I'm like, man, I'm like, this sucks. Like, can it ever be over? You know, there's times where it can just happen, boom, one right after the other, and you're like, when is this ever going to end? Well, I hate to tell you this, it's not going to end, but the, what you do in those trials and in those tribulations, it can be easier than that. Yes. Amen. 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 I agree. Amen? Amen. So again, we have the power and authority to drive out the devil, to expose his schemes, and to uproot any plans that are set before us or with anybody. Amen. We have that authority to drive him out. We have the authority to say, get behind me, Satan. You have no authority. You have no power here. As that saying says, not today, Satan. You know? And we have to realize that. Whatever we're going through, whatever's coming our way, not today, Satan. I'm not going to give you that place. I'm not going to give you that power. Amen. Amen. Let me say this. The devil doesn't have delegated authority over us. Come on. Yes. But he does get his power through the actions of us. Mm, he operates through our choices. We have a decision. Are we going to be led by the fruits of the Spirit? And, or should I say we're going to put on the fruits of the Spirit? Or are we going to put on the flesh? Amen. Fruits of the flesh. Are we going to, are we, are we going to walk, walk in those fruits and be like, hey, you know what? I don't care what's going on, but I know that my God is greater than this. You know, or are you just going to be like, oh, forget it. This is stupid. Nin, nin, nin. Just act heck of fleshly. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know? So this is why we need to continue to be in prayer and fast. Because we need our actions and the way we live to be influenced by the Holy Spirit and not the devil. Amen? Amen. You know, we can go through, you know, we can have problems in our marriage. We can have problems with our kids. We can have problems in our job. And acting fleshly, is that going to help the situation? No. 
No, because usually half the time they're going to dangle it back in your face and be like, you weren't, you weren't in the, you know, in the spirit, you're in the flesh. And then it's just going to have that trickling effect. Right. But if we're at, if we are in the spirit, I don't want to say act because we don't act. When we put on Christ, we put on Christ and we are like him. We don't act like him because acting is just in front of people. We should be Christ 24 seven in front of people and in our homes. Amen. 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 Um, so this is why you need to stand in the position that God had called you into. As Esther was praying and fasting, God showed her what she was supposed to do and the plan he had given her to put into motion. Amen. Amen. Esther 5, 7 through 8 says, and Esther answered, this is what I want and what I ask for. My king, if you are pleased with me, if it pleases you, give me that, give me what I ask for and do what I want. Come with Hammond tomorrow to the banquet. I will prepare for you. Then I'll answer your question. See, if she would have spoken at the time of that first banquet, the plan and the purpose of God to get the glory in, that, in, in this story would have been for nothing. How many know that there's a time and a purpose for you to say something? Not every word that God puts in your heart or in your, you know, within you doesn't mean that you automatically go and say it. Because there's times where God's like, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to drop this in your spirit, but I need you to pray on it. I need you to fast. I need you to come content to me and listen to what I need you to do. Because again, as Esther, she could have totally just been like, King, this is what's going on. But yet, the, 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 God told her to withhold that to that next banquet. Amen? Amen. Amen? And the Lord, again, the Lord showed Esther to wait to say something because he had something that needed to happen before she could reveal the plan of Hammond. Amen. 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 God had to start setting everything up. If you read... Um, Esther 5, there was a whole setup. There was a whole thing that had happened. Haman had had just really kind of, you know, he came out of this banquet all happy and, yeah, I feel great, you know. And then he seen Mordecai and he became so grieved, so angry and just rage. And, and he went home and he was like, this dude, you don't even know. He was there just smirking at me, which it didn't really happen. I'm just kidding. My version. Um, he's smirking and he didn't give me homage and didn't bow down when I was walking there. So I just hate this guy. I just want to just, you know, destroy him. And of course, his family, you know, obviously from the world, was like, hey, yeah, why don't you just hang him? Why don't you do, you know, build this big old gallow and you can hang on? You know, we can, you can tell the king that this is what's happening and He'll hang up. And so he's like, yeah, that's a great plan. Like, thank you. You know, so of course, that next day came, right? And also remember in the beginning, um, I think it was in three, two or three, chapters two or three, I can't remember. Um, but there was a plan against the king that two of his eunuchs were wanting to lay hands on him because I guess they didn't like what he was doing really explain but they're like they wanted to lay hands on him and probably kill him and do all this stuff right so uh, uh, Mordecai heard about it right and so Mordecai ended up going and telling the king and the king was like what like no way and so he went and asked the, the to like is this true and they said yes so the, the two guys you know uh, died because they were gonna lay hands on the king so the king had said, write his name down in, in the books to say that this guy saved my life, right? So this is where I'm going to start off, and I do apologize. It is a long section of scripture, but just bear with me because it all comes together. So in Esther 6, 1 through 14, it says, that night, so again, this is right after the banquet, right? That night, the king could not sleep. So one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the Chronicles, and they 
and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told Big, Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers who had sought to lay hands on King Azarus. Then the king said, what honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? The king's servants who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. So the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The king's servants said to him, Haman is he there, standing in the court. The king said, let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king asked him, What shall we do for the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, Whom would the king delight to honor more than me? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delights to honor, let a royal robe be brought, brought which the king has worn, and a horse on which the king has ridden, which, was a, which has a royal crest placed on its head. Then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of the one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the, the man whom the king delights to honor. Then parade him, in, on, him on horseback through the city square, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be to, done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Hurry! Take the robe and the horse, as you have suggested, and do so for Mordecai, the Jew who sits within the king's gates. Let nothing, nothing undone of all that you have spoken. So Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai, and led him on horseback through the city square, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be to the man whom the king delights to honor. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Afterwards, Mordecai went back to the king's gates. But Haman hurried to his house, mourning and with <clears throat> geez, mourning with his head covered. When Haman told his wife Zeresh and all of his friends everything that had happened to him, he was he, his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, "If Mordecai, if Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall." is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but sh will surely fall before him. While they were still take talking with him, the king's Enoch came and hastened to bring Haman to the banquet, which East Esther had prepared. Amen. Amen? So, what a big slap in the face that was. He thought he was going to the king and be like, oh, the king likes me. Like, he's going to do this. And the king's like, what would you do? And he was like, oh, man, I would give him the royal treatment. So then, lo and behold, the king was like, do it for Mordecai. He, just imagine that. Someone that you really hate, for the king to say, make a royal decree on the city streets. And mind you, everybody knew that he didn't like them. So just imagine the humility. How many knows that God will bring you a big humble pie? Yes. You get built up in pride. God's like, oh, for real? <laughs> Just kick that carpet out from underneath you. Right. Right. Amen. So, again, we can see here that God set things up in a way that he can move and things can be heard and changes, changes can take place at the right time. So now... Let's figure out how, or let's see how Esther put things into action. Amen? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to jump to Esther 7, 1 through 6. And it says, so the king and Haman, again, this is after the embarrassing moment of Haman. And at the end, it showed that he was taken by uh, the king's eunuchs, eunuchs um, to go to the banquet. So we're starting off. It says, so the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And on the second day at the banquet of wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted to you, and what is your request up to half the kingdom? It shall be done. Then Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. 
For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. He, or had we been, had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue. Although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss, so King King Azarus answered and said to Queen Esther, "Who is he, and where is he? Who has who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing?" And Esther said, the adversary and the enemy is this wicked Haman. Mm. So Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Mm. So again, God had to set pretty much Mordecai in a position and Haman in a position for Queen Esther to reveal who this wicked person was. Amen? Yeah. And so again, let me say this. If you've ever been prompted to say something, whether it be on the pulpit or, you know, God's giving you a word to speak to somebody, you really get nervous, right? Well, I don't know, again, I don't know about you guys, but I know with me, like, <coughs> my heart starts racing, my throat feels like it closes up, I get clammy, and like, ooh, I don't want to go there, you know? <laughs> and so just imagine, like, you're going to have to tell the king, like, your second-hand man is this wicked person that is about to kill me and all of my people. Men, women, children, everything, right? Just imagine how, like, scared she was, right? Mm -hmm. See, Esther at that time could have chosen not to say anything because she could have been intimidated. How many, how many of you, should I say, or how many know that the devil can intimidate you? Yeah. When the Lord is like, no, you got to say something. You got to do something. You got to just get up and do it. But then the devil will come and be like, yeah, who do you think is going to listen? <coughs> uh, I don't think so. Like, you know, no one's going to listen to you. You're just, you just, you, you're young, you're older, wise, you know, um, you know, no one's going to listen. You, you know what I'm saying? And so. Esther could have not have said nothing because she seen Haman right there and was like, man, like, that's very intimidating. Like, I'm about to tell, again, the king that his guy is like the devil, right? But yet she chose to expose the enemy and his plans, right? And if we come out of what the enemy is trying to keep us silent with, then we, and we, need, then we need to expose it. If we want to come out of what the enemy is trying to keep us silent with, we need to expose it. Just like Esther did with Haman. If she wanted to save her people, she had to come out of what was trying to keep her silent. And we need to do that same thing. What's keeping you silent today from doing what you need to do? What's keeping you silent today that the Lord has spoken to you about that you needed to do a while ago? Was it fear? Was it thinking that you were good enough? Was it yeah. being intimidated by people? Yeah. Yeah. Was it your past? Yeah. You know, what is it? Yeah. Again, I, I, I know we don't like to look at our past, but if you want to be delivered from it, you need to expose it so the enemy yeah. will be able to destroy you. Or try and destroy you. Because again, But if you don't decide today to expose the past or expose what the devil's trying to keep you silent with, that's going to be that thing that the devil's always going to use. Yes. 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 If you don't overcome those things, the devil will always try to use it. Yes. You know, for the longest time for me, the devil would always use intimidation. Um, and even when we started this church, um, uh, m m m most of you guys know that I was never in the front. I was never, again, I was never in the sanctuary. So nobody knew who I was. I felt so out of place, and the devil used that a lot. Why are you even here? They don't even know you. They don't need you. They have pastor. They have this person. They have that person. But I had to come to realize that I was put in a position 
to be the pastor's wife to be here, and I need to be here. Not for my, my own personal gain, but because there's women that need to hear my voice. So I had to take action. I had to speak to the devil and tell him every Sunday, no, I need to be here. No, these women need me. Not me personally, but they need to hear what I need, what God is speaking to them. And so even now, I'm not gonna lie, there's times where that is that comes up and I'm like, why am I here? Why am I here? No one listens. Everybody has all these other pastors. Why am I here? But God's saying, you need to be here. Yeah. Amen. And so again, now is the right time to take action. I don't know where everyone's at. I don't know if everyone here has a daily walk. I don't know if you have your 2020 vision. Hopefully, for those, you know, if you do, hopefully it's more than 2020. Amen. Because we don't want to continue to stay the same. We want to keep progressing. Amen? Because Amen. 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 The, 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 the more you're with God, it's knowing that you, that you only rely on God Amen. to help you through your, your day. Right? Yeah. But for those of you who don't, or maybe lacking at times, again, take action today. Let, t- let this be the year of growth, yes. spiritually yes. and physically. Amen? Yeah. I felt at the beginning of the year, I was like, man, Lord, like, what am I to do? You know, what, what is it that, that, you know, what word are you giving me? And he says, this is the year of growth. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know? I still don't know the full aspect of what that means. But I know, like I was saying, I think the other night, or last night, that God is wanting to expand and wanting to do more. So I need to grow more in him. Because, again, this is a new chapter coming in, our li- in, in, in everybody's lives, but in this church and then even in my family's life, there's a new not chapter, I keep saying chapter, but there's a new book. And I need to be prepared. I need to start growing in areas. Because again, I caught a little bit of a glimpse of how, you know, like that spiritual warfare of what it's going to look like as we go. And it's going to be hard. So I need to start growing now to get to where I need to be. Amen? Amen. So again, take heed to what the Lord is talking to you about tonight. And again, over... These last few days and even tomorrow, take heed to what he's telling you. Take heed to those things that he's saying. You gotta let it go. You gotta realize that those words or those things don't define you. Don't worry about what it's gonna look like because I have my hand upon you. Just as he had his hand upon Esther, I'm pretty sure she was like, What am I gonna do? You know, what is this gonna look like? Again, if if I go before the king, I have a 50-50 chance. That I'm going to die or live. But God's like, don't worry. I got you. I have you in my hands. Amen? Amen. I know that when we think about doing things for God, we get scared and tend not to do things that God has asked us to do. Maybe because you have those thoughts of what others are going to think or say, or maybe you think that it's going to be impossible because you're not worthy enough. Or because of what you've been through. Yeah. Again, if I'm a woman, I should know not know what everybody thinks. But we're always trying to think what the other one's gonna say. Yeah. We're always thinking, oh, what are they gonna say? Like, yeah. am I dressed correctly? Like, I wanna look, yeah. look, you know, look good for not saying like good, but like dress properly for that person because I don't want them to think this. Or I'm, you know, I don't know if I should say something. Because what are they going to say? Are they going to be like, oh, that's, you know, that's not of God or, yeah. or that's not godly or, you know, you know, like we really judge ourselves with one another when we're not even judging each other. Yeah. But we in ourselves feel that same way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So let me say this. God will turn your mess into a message and your test into a testimony. That's right. Amen. 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 Let's put. The, 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 should I say, stinking thinking away. That's right. You know, who cares what the other person is saying? Who cares what other people are thinking? What does God think? Because that's the ultimate, yeah. ultimate yes. goal. Yes. It's like, what is God telling me to do? If God is telling me to do something, who is that person?
person to say not to do it. Yeah. Who is, who, you know, like if seven's saying, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that. Well, if God's saying to do that, yes, pray and say, Lord, is this what I really need to do? Because again, we can hear different voices. As I think Sophie was saying, I think it was Sophie, was saying that we really need to know the voice of God. Oh, is that the panels? That's what it was. I had to think in my mind where she where said that. But we really had to, like, we, we really got to know the voice of God. Amen. Because I learned, or not I learned, but I heard a message a while ago that there's three voices that we hear. Ours, the devil's, and God's. Yeah. And we have to decide or de decipher whose is whose. Right. You know, God's not going to put you to shame. God's not going to put doubt in you. God's not going to you know, uh, uh, condemn or anything like that. He's going to only uplift and bring nothing but light and, and goodness. You know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe. Our voices are just going to be that, oh, I don't know if I can do it. You know, and the devil's going to be like, girl, you suck. You know? <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, or am I the only one that, that, that can hear those different voices? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to realize that when God is, is speaking through you, do what you need to do, but make sure and pray on it that this is what you really need to do. Because again, God, the Lord's going to speak to you and tell you to do things or show you things, not just because, you know, he's like, ah, I just want to see, you know, what you're going to do. Well, no, he wants you to seek him. He wants you to, to, to recognize that it's his voice. And you'll know, like, if you mess up and be like, oh, man, I, like, totally failed that one. Because again... Just like with Esther, when God tells you to do something and it's that eager, that kind of like, you need to do it now and you don't do it, urgency. that urgency, thank you, um, and we don't do it and we're like, oh, I don't know if it's God, I don't know. But when you know God's voice, you know to do that urgency, the, to, to step into that whatever he's telling you to do. But when we don't know his voice, then we're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do it. And God's like, come on, like I'm waiting for you. Come on. And then you just still that kind of like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Lord, is this really you? Is this yeah. really you? Come on. And then God's like, all right, dude, like, you're taking forever. I'm just going to, yeah. yeah. you know, not to be like me like that, but God's like, like, come on, I'm trying to use you. You're asking to be used, and you're asking to do these things, but you're not listening. I'm telling you. And God's like, all right, like, I'm going to show you that it was really me. And then God will go to somebody else and be like, See, daughter, yeah. I told you, this yeah. is what I need you to do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And again, it pretty much boils down to stepping out in faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. I asked a bunch of ladies this. I asked my Bible study and just kind of, you know, just the ladies in the Bible study and just, I guess to say, my other ladies within the church. How much, how much faith is God asking for? It's not a short question. But does anybody know like what, what, what how much faith that he's asking you? Faith is a mustard. A mustard seed size faith. Do you guys know how big a mustard seed is? It's tiny. It's like the, 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 the size of a pin, like one of the little sewing pins, like where you keep the things together. It's like that size. So is that a lot of faith that we need? No. All we need to do is God saying something. You're like, God, I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know what it's going to sound like or, or anything. But you know what? I'm going to have faith to step. Amazing. It's just that first step. That's, not, that's, that's all he's asking for is that first step. Because once you do that first step, all the other steps are going to be a lot more easier just to keep going. Because you're like, okay, God, I've seen it. I, I have more faith. My faith starts growing. My faith starts building up, and that's what we need to, to, to recognize, is all he's asking for is that little bit to start. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And then we all know that once once that mustard seed is planted and, grow, and grown, it's like one of the biggest trees in the world. Amen. So just imagine that he just wants that little bit of faith so that once we step out and we start <clears throat> maturing and we start watering and start nurturing that faith that our faith is going to be unstoppable. Amen. It's going to be unmovable because it's going to be so big that nothing is going to stop us from doing what he has called us to do. Amen? Amen. I need to hurry up. Um, so 
Um, I did the Kingdom Women Women's Book um, when I was doing Bible study, and there was one quote that was in the book that really just kind of stuck with me. It says, "Keep in mind that faith doesn't always make sense, but it does make miracles." Faith, it won't make sense, but until you step out, those miracles will happen. Amen? Amen. Many times God will ask you to do something, and it won't make much sense. But when we say, okay, God, I'll do it, then that's when miracles happen. Again, if you look, you know, at me and Pastor, it doesn't make sense to move to Spain to start a new work. We have the best church ever. You know what I'm saying? We have, you know, we've been here, you know, 13 years. We have a thriving church. You, you know what I'm saying? And then for us to just to be like, okay, we're going to go on the other side of the world to start something new. Does that make much sense in, in, in human eyes? No. But in God's eyes, it makes perfect sense. Yes. Okay. Amen? Because he already ordained our steps to do things. Yes. Amen? Yes. And so that's where that quote makes sense. Keep in mind that faith doesn't always make sense, but it makes miracles. Yes. Amen? Yes. Many times God will ask you to do something, and, and again, it won't make sense, much sense, but when we say, okay, I'll do it, that's when miracles happen. Faith is an action that requires something to do, or it requires us to do something. We are required to do something when God shows us things that sometimes can, can be any, anything from taking action in a situation to praying for someone, to blessing someone, to just about anything he asks you to do. Amen. Again, all, we're required to do something. Like I said last night, our feet weren't put on our bodies to just sit. Yep. Yep. They're required to be used and to walk. <clears throat> If we want to get from point, e, point A to point B, what are we going to do? Just hope to get there? Just kind of slide along on our butts and be like, okay, we're going to get there. No, we're used, we're, we, we have feet to walk that way. And that's all God's asking you to do. If you believe the word you hear preached or have read and you act upon it, you will get results. If the Lord speaks to you, and has you do something, act upon it. Because you will get results. Amen. The Lord is asking you to heal, go and pray for someone to be healed. They may not get healed at that moment. Because what we need to do is realize that we're doing what God has called us to do. Amen. It may not happen right away. But there's a process that takes place. Some people, yes, do get healed right away. But those results are left into God's hands. Right. We're just stepping out in faith and doing what he has called us to do. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to start bringing it down. Um, if the worship team wants to come up here, they're more than welcome to. Um, so our king is calling you, or your king is calling you to come forth and to show your beauty. But many of you may be like Vashti. She was a beautiful queen, but she was aimless. She ignored the king's calling because of not understanding the importance of what he was calling her to do. But, and you may be in a place of not understanding the importance of your purpose in God yet. But Esther had a divine calling and destiny just like you. Mm -hmm. Esther was willing to die or do whatever it takes for what she believed in. And she was brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Right now is such the greatest time for women the King of Kings is calling all women out of apathy, self-centeredness, pride, and the feeling of inadequacies. Right now, God is calling us, calling, or let me say this, right now, God is calling all the Deborahs, all the Sarahs, all the Esthers, all the Ruths, all the Hannahs, and all the Annas, out of the shadows and calling them forward. But are you willing to answer that call? Are you ladies ready to step up and do what he is calling you to do? He's calling us women to come out of those shadows, out of those places where God is like, you don't need to be there no more. Get up, dust yourself off, dust that ash off of you, because you are my 
my daughter. You are my princess. Amen? Amen. Amen. And are you willing to let go of that old woman, the things of the past, the things that could, that continue to hold you back? The Lord is looking for those who are willing to submit themselves to the calling, no matter what it may look like or what may come your way. I believe the Lord is wanting to anoint that, uh, anoint, he's wanting to anoint you guys like the mighty women that were that were in the Bible or that are in the Bible and carry to be used and stirred up in us today. He's calling that anointing to come out. He's calling the, those things to come out. Not again, not to just say, you know, okay, you're, you're, you're good, you're done. No, there's a purpose in the plan. Each one of us has that purpose in the plan. And there's going to be Deborah's. There's going to be Ruth's. There's going to be Hannah's. The ones that need to be in the church to be the one to start praying, to start stirring up things, to start uh, um, um, recognizing who the king is. Are you ready for that today? Are you ready to stand up and be who he has called you to be? But again, it's going to be up to you to want it. And step into your calling and do what God is preparing for you in your households. Are you willing to let God be the head of your life? Are you willing to take heed to when the Holy Spirit comes and rebukes you and speaks to you about the things that need to be changed in your life? If you say that if you say that you're a Christian, how can you still be the same? Amen. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, how can you act the same and react Amen. the same? Amen. 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 How can we even talk the same? How? 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 We say we're Christ-like. We should be different. Amen. We shouldn't still be the same. Yeah. Esther was or was an orphan, but did that keep her where she was at? No. No, she rose up to be a queen. Amen. And that's what you guys need to realize. You are a queen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know the Holy Spirit talks to me when when attitude arises within me. And I know the Holy Spirit talks to you guys when, the, when attitudes arise and words decide to come out that don't need to come out. So I encourage you to start taking action in your walk today. Start stepping out in faith. Start changing the things in your life. Again, faith may not make sense at the time, but when we step out, miracles happen. Amen. 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 So what I want everybody to do, and I know this is, this, this, this section isn't really big. But I really want everybody to come forward. I really want you guys to come forward and, and seek God and really just say, Lord, I lay down self. I lay down my attitudes. I lay down my words that I had spoken that were mean and nasty. I lay those things down because if I'm supposed to be changed, I need to be changed. I need to walk in you. Amen?
mighty works in you, Father God. I pray for those that have been silenced long enough, Lord God, to start speaking your language, Father God, to start speaking the things that you have spoken to them, Lord God. That you help us women to start aligning ourselves up with what you have called us to do, what you have called us to be, Father God. I bind and rebuke any fear that is trying to creep up on them, Lord God. And I pray that, Father God, that you give them the strength, Lord God, to give them the power and the authority that they need to be able to do what you have called them to do and what you have called them out of, Father God. And so, Father, that those that struggle with their past, Lord God, those the, the, the ones that struggle with those words that continue to, to hold them down, that continue to chain, chain them up, Lord God, I break it in, 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 in uh, break every chain, Lord God. Yes. And I ask that you break every chain, yes. Father God, yes. that is holding us back, Lord God. Yes. And even those chains that are broken, Lord God, let those shackles come off, Father God. That those shackles will no longer take me and be a part of us, Lord God. But we're able to break them and we're able to drop them, Father God, so that we can walk in the authority and the power that you have given us, Father God. And Lord God, I pray that you continue to I'm going to continue to fast. I'm going to continue to pray, Lord God. 